And if so many of these countries around the world are incapable of governing themselves, then, then it's time for us to just put the, to just to, to put the imperial hat back on to say, we're going to govern those countries if you're incapable of governing yourselves, because enough is enough. We're done being invaded. Because our own national security risk is at stake. Exactly. National security interests are at stake. You can say that about pretty much all of Africa. They're incapable of governing themselves and benefiting their citizens because the governments there are all about looting and pillaging and lining their pockets and going shopping in Paris. People on the land. left are going to watch this. They're going to say, wait a minute, Eric Prince is talking about being a colonialist again. Absolutely. Everybody's seen this video of a guy called Eric Prince of Blackwater. And if you've seen this video, you have a reaction to it. And because my audience is primarily African, uh, primarily black, you know, I mean, or anybody who's interested in Africa, or interested in what is going on in the diaspora and so forth. I would assume that you are aware of this particular video and the fact that uh, this individual, a white guy, said that Africa should be recolonized and that uh, we are incapable of governing ourselves. Now, the most important thing that uh, you need to understand about this is the reason for the uproar and the reaction that we've had in the black community, in the African community, and where that comes from. Now, a lot of this is to do with the kind of language that he uses and the manner in which he speaks when he says what he says. So I'm going to go into a lot of things. So listen, make sure that you stay to the end of this video because I'm going to go into exactly how we should react to this. So I'm going to talk about how we are reacting to this. And then I'm going to, as we go through this uh, video, we're going to look into who this guy is, where he came from, what Blackwater is, why it exists, what it does, its relevance to Africa, its relevance to the future of Africa, the role that private military organizations play in Africa, because that is what Blackwater is, and then the way that we should be reacting to something like this as Africans. African history is human history. We've spent so much time asking others to tell us who we are. We haven't done the logical thing, take control of our own narrative. That's why I created my newsletter for all of us, to get us to think differently about how everything going on affects us not just in history, but with technology, politics, culture, and media. Pay attention. You can go and read all of my free articles right now to get an idea of what I'll be doing. You can pledge today for either a monthly or annual subscription with the option to join. Our division is not by accident. It is by design. We're going to change that. Obviously, with the videos that I've made, and I, I now understand, you know, what my audience typically is really looking for in terms of my content and the material that I put out there. Yes, I've got my main videos that are being released. So make sure that everybody, you are subscribed to my newsletter. So you're always up to date on exactly what is going on. Make sure that you also check out my Patreon if you wish to support my videos as well. Check that out and become a member. Download the app so you can communicate with me directly on there, as well as the community on Patreon, which is the behind-the-scenes support for the videos that I make. Giving people context and perspective is really valued in my community or in the community that we're building. Because I took for granted to a degree that there are some things that are just generally understood. That is not the case. There are a lot of things that are not just generally understood in the community. For that reason, when I looked at something like this, I said, you know what? There's a lot of people who do not know what Blackwater is and its relevance. And the fact that this stuff is very, very connected to Africa and that Eric Prince himself, this individual, is very, very active in Africa. In fact, the genesis of his organization is born out of Africa. Now, Eric Prince, this guy that you saw, was influenced by the 1994 Rwandan genocide. Now, I will be talking specifically about the Rwandan genocide because that is actually connected to other stuff that is going on specifically in the Congo and in other parts of Africa. But for this particular video, we're not going to get, get into that. We'll get into that in a future video. So the Rwandan genocide happens in 1994 where 800,000 people were killed over the course of like 100 days. 100 days, guys. That is three months, almost a million people. While Western nations were dragging their feet, not responding in time, not quick, that blase blah and so on and so forth. And again, that is a, a topic that I would discuss specifically when I get into the Rwanda uh, 
video that I'm going to make. Now, young Eric is affected by this. And he then makes a decision that uh, he wants to create something that provides a certain level of security in these regions in the events that these sorts of things happen. But the question you've got to ask yourself is that who does Eric Prince want to provide security for? Is it for the Africans or is it for somebody else? We're going to get into that. So his background is that he was a Navy SEAL and uh, he, his father, you know, took him on, I think he took him on some kind of excursion where he, he uh, and he saw things that affected him deeply. And I think, I believe that he volunteered to go to Nicaragua to find mass graves of uh, an alleged uh, atrocities that existed there. And there was a mass grave, which he alleges to have actually found. Regardless, these sorts of experiences early on in his life led him down a path of the military, of defense, of security. Now, young Eric was not a poor man. Young Eric's father owned a, you know, a motor auto parts company or something of that ilk. And upon his father's death, young Eric sells his, his father's parts company for like $1.3 billion. So that guy had that cash. Had that cash. So when you combine an individual like this white guy, America, with billions and a perspective of Africa that is very imperialistic based on the way that he processed the Rwanda genocide, because this man is not processing the Rwanda genocide based on the history of colonialism that led to the division between the Tutsis and the Hutu, Hutu people and the Twa people. No, 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 no. He's not looking into that as to how that happened and how the Belgians and so on and so forth and Germans created the environment under which those sorts of things could happen. He's not interested in that. What he's looking at is the symptom of the disease and laying blame on that. Like, you know what? These Africans, I've got to step in here as the big man on campus, the big white guy, and create security for my clients and my folks. So he uses some of that cash that he got from his sale of his father's company and creates Blackwater, you know, because it was already in the Navy SEALs and he leaves and then he creates Blackwater. And Blackwater was a private military group specifically designed to create, provide security services in conflict zones for dignitaries, high-ranking officials, diplomats in hostile areas. And, and, uh, and also, he also provided training for, of foreign military forces. Okay. Now, he then gets big, massive contracts from the government to the tune of like a billion dollars or something, becoming a major provider of security during the Iraq war and Afghanistan. So he now becomes effectively, how do I put it, like a shadow arm of the US military. Now, remember that I talked about the Wagner Group and how people... And the Wagner Group operates in Africa as well as a Russian paramilitary group similar to Blackwater. And how though they were categorized, because you know how the propaganda went, where they were like, oh, you know, Wagner Group, these people are the Kremlin and the this and the that. And Africa should not be associating themselves with these people. That was always the rhetoric we were hearing. When we, in reality, we were like, listen, we're going to work with anybody that's going to give us our own security, considering the fact that these Western colonialists are, pro are practicing neocolonialism on African soil. Who are you to tell us who we can and cannot work with to secure our borders? That's the reason why Niger, Burkina Faso, and all of these places have been enlisting the help of Wagner. Now, you see what I'm trying to draw here is a little parallel for you of the perspective and rhetoric that is used when the interests are not African and are in other foreign bodies. Because when it's foreign bodies or the interests are American, oh, using Blackwater is completely fine. Giving them a billion dollars in contracts is completely fine. Come, provide security for our diplomats and whatever as we're waging war and dropping bombs in Iraq and so on. But when Africans want to do it, oh, these people are terrorists. I mean, these people are terror. You know, how can you work with these, 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 these mercenaries? It's a Wagner Group's relationship with the Russian government is the same thing that Blackwater's relationship with the U.S. government was. Prigozhin, who is now gone, you know, is essentially the equivalent of Eric Prince. Both rich guys from the private sector at a, at a point who get into military fun and games, war games. Anyway, so you look at that and you're like, oh, you know what? I'm now beginning to understand exactly what is going on here because this man is profiteering from war. He's, it's, it's, he's like, it's like you're privatizing military activity. Now... 
a turning point for Blackwater because you're going to be wondering like, okay, look, what happened to Blackwater? Why did he leave? So there was an incident in September 2007. It was called the Nissau Square Massacre where uh, Blackwater personnel, like the personnel of this guy's group, Eric Prince's group, opened fire in a crowded square in Baghdad. And this resulted in the death of 17 Iraqi civilians and a lot of uh, injuries, you know, to, to civilians that were in this crowd. Now, what this event did is that it all of a sudden drew a spotlight on the activities of Blackwater in these conflict regions. And there was widespread criticism and, it's, and uh, the company's operations brought into view like the sort of implications of the use of private military forces in conflict zones. And the idea that when you bring private military into these conflict zones that are not under the direct auspices of Geneva Convention or, you know, the kinds of things where when something is in public view, where you are the military of a, of an, of a country, it's more transparent. And listen, when I say transparent, it's to a degree transparent because nothing is transparent with these guys. But it's more transparent in terms of your activities on the ground versus if you are operating as a private military group. So once that happens, Blackwater now becomes a, I wouldn't even say so much a pariah, but it's under more scrutiny. And this guy, Eric Prince, just JJ, just, you know, very calmly separates himself from Blackwater. He ends up selling it in 2010. So just three years after this massacre and all the negative publicity that, and again, notice what I said, publicity, because this is all PR. Like it's a company. He's turned warfare and these private military groups and anybody who's played Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, you know about a lot of these sorts of things because th this, these threads and storylines are in those video games. But these private military groups essentially commercialize the art of war or the act of war. So it is about propaganda. It is about marketing. It is about PR. It is about commercials. It is about selling yourself. They can't put their commercials on regular TV because they're selling their services to countries, to diplomats, to politicians, to despots, to anybody who's got that dollar to spend. So they've got to market a different way. But when all of a sudden your name now becomes into a public view, it becomes less marketable for people to actually hire you in particular parts of the world. He sells the company in 2010. And he then turns his attention to our wonderful continent, Africa. You see, this guy now saw an opportunity to apply his expertise in security and logistics to Africa. And as I said, the genesis of Blackwater was Rwanda. Now, you would think, you would think that a man who saw what happened in Rwanda and is so concerned about it would offer his security services directly to the people fighting in Rwanda. He would put all his might and his billions and everything into, you know what, how can I resolve the conflicts in Rwanda and provide security so that we prevent this kind of genocide ever happening to Africans again on the ground? He doesn't go that route. He goes the route of like, how can I use my thing, my, my expertise to, seek, to provide security for Americans and other foreign entities operating in Africa or in Afghanistan or in Iraq or in all over parts of the world. That's the way that this guy's brain operates. So you understand where his, you know, where his focus is. So when you see something like that, right, and you now fast forward to where we are now, we're in 2010. And this guy now decides that, you know what, I'm going into Africa now because that whole Middle East thing has now gone bad. The, the Blackwater now gets rebranded to, to be called Academ Academy. So it's got rebranding. It's not even Blackwater anymore. And he then goes to the African continent and becomes associated and pay very close attention to what I'm going to tell you here, guys, with a group called, it's called the Frontier services group now there's two groups frontier services group which is military focused on logistics aviation and security services and frontier resource group which is focused on private equity and investment resources minerals now i'm going to place these two pieces for you in sequence because they're very important to understand the trajectory of this individual. The first thing is private, uh, is Frontier Services Group, which is the security forces and so forth. Now, what is interesting about this, that you're going to ask that, hey, Mac, Frontier Services Group, okay, he's doing security forces. Uh, isn't that America? But I thought he left Blackwater, and I thought he left security forces, and he sold Blackwater. So what is this that you're talking about, Mac? Well, he's got a new client now, guys, and that new client is China. You see, Frontier Services Group is a Chinese group focused on security for 
Chinese and foreign interests, specifically Chinese, like I said, operating in African countries to do with oil, gas, mining, infrastructure, and so on and so forth. Now, he's now becomes, he now becomes significantly backed by Chinese investment. And when you start looking at the way that this guy is going, you understand sort of the dynamic and the, his aspirations, so to speak. So his aspirations is like, you know what? I don't want to end with this security stuff. It's not just about this. Where I'm really going with this is that I want to start playing in the big leagues. Because you understand that this man has been operating in the big leagues since he sold his father's company for $1.3 billion. A man who's in the military who has $1.3 billion to play around with, where he can take a few hundred million to set up a private military group. That's a dangerous individual. Because you know that I said in some videos that I made, I don't respect him, but I respect the hustle. Don't hate the player, guys. Hate the game. And what we're talking about here is the game. We're not talking about the player. Forget the player. You can't knock the hustle, guys. But you got to understand the hustle. And the problem with us as Africans, a lot of Africans do not even know the hustle, including me. I didn't know the hustle till I did the research. I didn't know the hustle. Now I do. I'm like, okay, Eric, 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 you're coming into you've Eric, you've come into Africa now. You've seen a new hustle. You tried the Middle East thing. That one has gone sour. Now you're in Africa. And nobody's there's no oversight. So you're now in there, and you're help. You're 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 getting contracts of foreign interests that are coming to extract minerals from our from our continent. Now I get it, Eric. So what he now moves on to from private security, because this guy had a lot of controversies. I mean, this guy was hiring, I think, Hungarian or whatever pilots to fly uh, crop dusters that he was outfitting with weapons. So he was attaching weapons to crop dusters to convert them to military vehicles and military planes. Then the international body started looking at that and investigating him, trying to figure out... All of that sort of stuff was happening. So the, he was working for the CIA, long story short. They were giving him contracts for him to do operations for them. Now, once things started going bad with in 2007 with the Blackwater thing, they exposed him. Like, And he said that he was betrayed and thrown under the bus because the CIA basically said that, yes, we've been, we've been giving this guy contracts. So he's been operating on our behalf in some of these countries and so on and so forth. So essentially, it's like American government tried to distance themselves from some of the actions of Blackwater. And then he felt that, how are you going to distance yourself when you were using me for, for plausible deniability? This is what I could glean from what I was reading, which is the way it goes. I mean, you're working with spies. So I mean, obviously, this is how we, that, that's the business. There, there is no, what do you say, integrity or, or, or honor amongst thieves. Regardless, he then shifts focus and he goes from frontier services group to frontier resource group frontier resource group as i told you is focused on equity investment and so on and so forth so he's now become more entrenched within the chinese operations in africa to a degree that he's now operating beyond just security he's like He's now, he, listen, who knows what kind of contracts this, this individual is getting. But the points I want to make here, and the reason why I wanted you guys to stay to the end of this video is understanding the way to respond to the comments and the insults that he leveled at Africa. You see, when you look at the African continent and you think about the legacy of colonialism and the legacy of exploitation, the legacy of abuse on, in Africa and the continued legacy of that, and you look at the scramble for Africa in 1881 to 1914 and its lasting impacts on the continent's political and economic landscapes. You really start to figure how these actions that are occurring now with these private military groups are just an extension of something that has been happening for hundreds of years on the African continent. You see, it's not enough that he's characterizing Africans as children who cannot govern themselves. That is by the by. That's just designed to stoke a flame, to stoke fire. Because he wants a reaction. As I said, this is about marketing. This is about creating an energy and propaganda around his, his services so that he can generate more business. Because he doesn't respect Africans, because Africans don't react the way that you're supposed to react, and notoriously so. You see, what you do with something like this is what I'm now providing you. You do your research, guys. You find out everything you can about your quarry, about your target, about the, the person you're going after. You stalk them. You study. Then you strike. And before you strike, you plan the strike and you don't even let people know how you're going to do it. But unfortunately, because we do not operate the way we're supposed to operate, I'm now forced to come on, on social media, YouTube and all and so on and so forth to now expose what the plan should be. 
But it's very simple, guys. And hopefully when you hear what I'm about to say, you will then understand how to apply this for the future. All this man cares about is that cash, money. All any of these folks care about is resources and cash because that translates to power and influence. If you want to go after somebody, you don't go after somebody like this by whining and complaining. Oh, he insulted us. Look at the insult. And then he is more famous now because of the promotion of by African platforms and social media people and commentators and creators than he ever was by virtue of white media and mainstream outlets. We've done the work for him. We've made him, we've, we've made him pop. He's popping now because of us. What you should be doing is you look at this and you say, listen, where is this guy making his cash? I just told you where he's making his money. Do you understand, Africa, that you control the cash flow of Eric Prince? Do you get that? Is that clear to you? Do you understand that you directly control the cash flow of FSG, of FRC, F F F FRG or whatever, Frontier Resource Group? Yes, China can go and be doing business all over the world elsewhere, but you know how interested they are in Africa. You know how much of a priority African investment is for China. So if you had a brain and we went just a bunch of bombs as Africans, we would make a very, very simple declaration. This is not a negotiable. Every African government or every African country that FSG, F F R G is operating in, that Eric Prince is providing security forces for and logistics for, you go to them and say, listen, this contract ends today if his contract with you doesn't end today. You hear what I'm saying? You end your contract and your business dealings with Eric Prince and any company affiliated with him today or your mining contracts your infrastructure contracts, your oil contracts, your gas contracts end today. You tell that to the Chinese government or any other government that is using his services in Africa. You've got 48 hours. I'm going to give you 24 hours to end the contract, another 24 hours to understand what's going on, to have a drink, go to the bar, lament. So I'm, I'm, I'm a nice guy. I give you 48 hours. But 24 hours, those contracts end. 48 hours, I give you a little break. You come back, we start doing business. Otherwise, we're going to go and do business with them, Russia and other people, not you. Case closed. Every single video that is being made online about this clown should be saying that, listen, government of Nigeria, government of, uh, of Rwanda, government of Congo, government of Ghana, government of Ivory Coast, government of every country that China is in, remove this man's... We, want to, we are going to identify every contract he's got out. What are you going to do? You're going to force it? You can't. What are you going to do? And you know what the funny thing is? I try not to even get too energetic with these sort of talks because I, I want it to really seep in because what tends to happen is when you talk real talk, guys try to say that you're a militant. You talk real talk and it's to do with Africa. You're militant. I, you, you have to be militant. You're, you're a, you're a con conspiracy theorist. The reality, guys, and this is what upsets me about our conversations on these topics is that where is everybody talking like I'm talking? We need more of this. I don't want to be only, the only one laying out groundwork plans for guys. These are basics. This is not even complicated. I'm not an economist. I'm not a commentator. I'm not a, a scholar. I'm a regular guy like you who just sees the writing on the wall. Nobody should have been angry when they saw that video. You should have been grateful that he has highlighted himself and put a massive target on his back and chest so you know where he is and you know how to find him and you know how to take him out. I don't mean that physically or before anybody starts to say anything. I'm not talking about that. I mean economically. You know what I'm saying? He just gave you everything you needed. Had he not put out that video and said that crap, I wouldn't have done the research to find out what this guy's situation is and what he's doing. You see, this is the funny thing. The reason why he does that and the reason why people will keep doing it to Africa and keep insulting you is because even after you watch this video, you're not going to do anything. All the people watching this are not going to do anything. All you're going to do is, oh, wow, this is such an insult. Look at this. Look at this guy. And then you share it. You put it in your stories and you share, 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 share. And after you've shared, you then go and... Um, uh, uh, go and eat your Burger King or McDonald's and and uh, and drink your 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 beers and your um you know your popcorn and carry on with your day. What's Drake playing now? What's what's Ye got on on the docket? That's 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 that's, that's where you're going to. Whereas the reality is that look, I just went out of my way to do all of this to put this together for you people. That's what I did. I went to put this together just to let people because I'm like I now want I listen. I'm I'm only one guy. So I'm, I'm not like people said, oh, Mac, you know, 
Don't say that. You No, it is the truth. I'm one person. Most people do not know who I am. Most people, okay? Yes, I've got a decent following now. Fantastic. I'm very grateful for everybody who's subscribed. But I'm, I'm nothing. Like, you know, I'm saying all of this. Where's this? This is not going to go anywhere. But hopefully, enough people who hear what I'm saying will understand how to approach these sorts of things in future and how to approach this specific thing. Because private military organizations in Africa are numerous. And at the end of the day, we need to understand the exploitation that these groups are having on the African continent. Because as I said, this man is not providing security for black people or Africans. That, that, that is not his interest. He's providing security for the people taking from Africa. And he has the audacity to then try and gaslight you by talking to another white guy who was like, the guy was smiling. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> and he's doing that in your face. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. While I continue to collect my checks. We're a bunch of bombs, guys. That's what we are. We're a bunch of bombs. And I'm saying it loud and clear. Africans, we're a bunch of bombs. Black Africa specifically. A bunch of bombs. And, and you know what? The, 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 fun, the funny thing about it, and the reason why I'm saying this is that somebody needs to say this to us. Because people who are not willing to say this is the reason why we continue to behave this way. Like children. This is an adult conversation. We sit down, we absorb, and you do this systematically. I sh we should not have had any of the kind of energy. I want, listen, when I went to my social media, this guy's video was super viral. Not just viral, super viral. Everybody was posting it in the community. Everybody. And I'm thinking to myself, like, what, what is that supposed to do? To reaffirm what they think of you? We know that this is what they think of us. We know that. How is this changing anything? We know that they think that we're, a that, that we're losers. We know that they think that we're children. We know that they think we're savages. We know that they think we're animals and, we're, and we, are, we don't have the cognitive ability to reason. We know all of this. We know that they think that we cannot govern ourselves. We can't take care of ourselves. Listen, let me, let me explain something to you, right? This man is no fool, isn't He's a businessman. Do you think that young Eric, old Eric now, well, middle-aged Eric, doesn't know about neocolonialism, doesn't know about the CFA franc and what France has been doing to undermine its former African or current African colonies for the last 60, 70 years. Do you think that this guy doesn't know about the amount of assassinations and dest destabilizations of governments that the West has participated in clandestinely that has resulted in the inability for Africa to get back up every time that they try to get back up or there is somebody who is doing the right thing why do they always mysteriously get removed does he not know the history of Libya what just happened in 2011 and what Libya is today versus what it was before somebody like him will now look at Libya and say that look at these people look at not thinking of do you know what Libya was in 2011 versus now and the role that America played in doing that and the fact that once they got rid of Gaddafi, they've not done anything to actually solve the issues that has resulted from the removal of the guy who was keeping everything in check. Of course he knows. That's not the point. The situation in Africa is designed to be that way because only through unrest and destabilization can the West continue to exploit you. They do not want a prosperous Africa. They do not want a truly democratic Africa. Democracy on your terms. How dare you come and be telling another country who they can and cannot have as a president? What has that got to do with you? Oh, it's a case of national security. Well, what about our national security? When I saw that Eric Prince, he said, yes, you know, we've got to go in there and recolonize. And the guy was like, yes, because it's about our national security. I'm like, okay. And he was like, yes. I'm like, mm, okay, that's your national security. What about our national security? You see, that's that megalomaniacal mentality, the imperialist mentality that our national security trumps everybody else's. So if we feel threatened by anything that is going on in your country, in your sovereign land, allegedly, we're going to come in there and we're going to do what we're going to do. But what this man doesn't understand, and the reason why I say that African-Americans, let me say african -American, Black America is so important, is you guys are the reason why Africa cannot be screwed over anymore. You guys, because you're on ground zero. You're on the, you're actually in the epicenter of the, of the place where all of these kinds of plans get spun. If Black America refused to allow America to engage in certain actions in Africa, it cannot engage in those actions. Facts. So the more educated that Black America is on what is really going on in Africa, the better off Africa is going to be in the future and the present. That's why I do what I do.
So people look at and say, hey, Mac, why are you so... Listen, man, Black America is one of the most important, is the most important piece of this entire Pan-African movement, this entire uplifting of Africa and getting Africa back on track. Black America hold the key to everything. Don't get it twisted. I'm, I'm, I'm letting you know. So people who are like, yeah, this Black Americans and this... You better get your minds right. Those guys hold the key to African salvation, period. Because when you have one group like that who are so influential in terms of culture... Let's not even get into anything. Just pure culture, where they can dictate the temperature of conversation on their own. And those people are connected to us historically. Guys, what are, what are we playing here, guys? You see, what I've always said about black Americans is that they're not really fully aware of their own power. That's part of the problem, and they're being kept that way, especially with the amount of power they have to influence their original homeland in Africa. Like, and again, my platform is all about the bridge. The reason why I'm making this video about Eric Prince is to let you know, this is an American man in your country who's trying to play you. He's playing games in Africa and making billions of it. While in your country, you're treated as a second-class citizen, guys from your country are going over to Africa to treat Africans like second-class citizens and making money off it and then turning around and making those sort of videos to insult you to your face and there's nothing you're going to do. Real talk. Who am I? Like, and I'll always say that in my videos because at the end of the day, if you guys do not do your due diligence and you do not get your minds right, we ain't going nowhere because everybody wants a piece of the pie in Africa now, except Africans and black America, which is nuts to me. You guys should be at the front of the line. Front of the line. Do you know how mad it is that white Americans are pushing harder to get pieces of Africa than black Americans are? And that black Americans, by and large, are trying to claw for pieces of America when Americans, white Americans, are running to Africa to take pieces of what is rightfully yours. What resources are in America? Do you know what's in Africa? We want a piece of this land. I'm like, okay, good for you, but do you know what you're giving up in Africa? If you have any sense, it's like, yeah, man, listen, we want what is due us in America, but missing that Africa thing is looking pretty tasty. It's looking pretty, 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 pretty tasty. And we're going, we're not going to let these guys, after they've screwed us off up over here, to go to our, our homeland that they stole us from, to also take from there too before us. No, we're at the front of the line. And I welcome you with open arms. Come home. It begins with this platform. Make sure that you're subscribed, guys. Make sure that you're on the newsletter. Link is in the bio, themerc.substack.com. The Merc.io has all the links. The Patreon is also there. Make sure that you're linked up to everything. Everybody needs to be subscribed. I'll, be, I'll continue to make these videos, continue to give you the material and the information that you need to get your minds right, guys. But listen, everybody needs to be on their P's and Q's, all right? Cheers. Developing a thriving community to uncover hidden African history, stimulate critical thinking, and build bridges between Africa and the diaspora requires resources. It cannot be done without you. Consider joining our Patreon family to support my work, where you can watch ad-free videos early, utilize the chat feature, participate in Patreon-only live shows, and be a part of my creative process. Visit the Patreon link at themerc.io, pick your membership tier, and let's make history together.